I've coon hunted my entire life, been around hounds my entire life. My grandparents had hounds. Great grandparents had hounds, so <laughs> it's something that I've done forever. Well, I'm Bob Riles. I have been a part of this coon hunting club, I guess, since it started. And in order to be a coon hunter, it has a whole lot to do with the hound. That it, it is a team of the hunter and the dog. The festival today is it's basically because of the movie is why we have it. And several of the people that are here were took part in the first movie. I was a little bitty guy about nine years old in that movie. Probably the thing that causes so many of us to like to do it is to take a young dog and work with the young dog and then see that dog get to the point where it can run and tree its, its own cane, which was a lot of what the movie Where the Red Fern Grows was, was about. All right, I've taught you everything you know. Now we're gonna see if you're coon dogs or if you're not. It's a well-known and well-loved children's book about a young boy and his two coon dogs. Where the Red Fern Grows was written by Woodrow Wilson Rawls, who based the story on his childhood growing up in the hills of northeastern Oklahoma. The book was published in 1961, and in 1974 was adapted into the first of several films. When I was a boy, I grew up in the Ozarks of Oklahoma. My folks were poor and the parcel of land we lived on was allotted to my mother because of the Cherokee blood that flowed in her veins. Except for one thing, I was the happiest boy alive. Wilson Rawls wrote and recorded the narration for the original film. That's his voice you hear in the opening shot. Both Where the Red Fern Grows movies were produced right here in the Cherokee Nation on land belonging to Cherokee Nation citizens. When you look at Ridgetop over there, all the way around this bowl. At one time, this was all owned by my family. Ed Feit showed us around his family's land called Swananoa, where the movies were shot, and shares his memories of the production. Wilson Rawls' book is something that's impacted elementary children all over the United States and, and outside the United States for, for decades. And so it, it made sense to me as the landowner now in 1999 when they wanted to remake the original movie, come on. We wanted them to come because uh, I, anywhere that you go in the United States and, and you talk about where the red fern grows, you're gonna have somebody that's gonna raise up, yeah, I read that book. Yeah. So tell me what it was like for you as a kid. When, when they showed up, it was, I've never seen anything like that. They brought in trucks, they brought in uh, trailers, they brought in generators, and they had, uh, emergency services, security. It was a big undertaking. The original movie was was shot here because uh, Wilson Rawls was from just up the road. While the farmhouse and other structures from the film production are no longer standing, you can visit locations from the original movie within the Cherokee Nation. Jensie's restaurant down at the old uh, Qualls store and then uh, they went up here to a local spring adjacent to the highway, and then they did some things at what was called Dripping Spring State Park, Natural Falls State Park. You know, really, uh, what that book has is a huge sphere of influence on Eastern Oklahoma. You may remember Rex Corley. He was one of the actors from the original film. He shared more memories of life on the set. Reuben Pritchard, I was the honorary little kid who fell on the ax and died, and everybody stood up and applauded. I grew up doing those same kind of things. We coon hunted, we squirrel hunted, we did every kind of hunting and fishing you could imagine because, you know, for a long time, that's how we put food on the table. But one of the shoots that we did um, was right there on the steps of, you know, his grandpa's grocery store, the general store. We'll meet you tomorrow night down by our pasture. We did that take 42 times and all of us had chewing tobacco in our mouth. Well, at least my brother and I, John Lindsay, he played the part of Rainy. Well, they wouldn't let us change tobacco. We had the same chaw in for the entire 42 takes. So it was everything I could do to keep from getting sick. When Wilson Rawls was still alive, he received countless letters from young fans of his books. 
Boxes of those letters are housed at the Cherokee National Archives in the Wilson Rawls Collection, located just outside of Tahlequah, Oklahoma, the capital of the Cherokee Nation. And this is where we, uh, we have all of our Wilson Rawls manuscripts and fan letters. All right, so what we have here are some of the handwritten manuscripts for where the red fern grows. And as you can see, some of them, a majority of these are, are the working manuscript. So you see the editorial process that he took in, in writing through it. So some of the, um, some of the paragraphs are stricken out. Uh, some of the words are, are stricken through. There are paragraph indents, question marks about you know, if they're gonna change this a little bit or, or what he's actually working towards. And so later on, of course, it will be typed up for the book itself, but this is really the working manuscript for where the red fern grows. The majority of the stuff that we do have are approximately 30 boxes of fan letters. One of the things that we do here with the Cherokee National Archives is we, we preserve not only our culture and our history, but also those who have an impact on our society, not just Cherokee society, but also ours as a whole, who are Cherokee. And Wilson Rawls is one of those people. Well, I, I think the fact that the book was so popular and then they actually made the movie in the setting where the book took place, it, it is something that the community should be proud of. They're able to look at that movie and say, that's my grandpa, that, that was my grandpa's dog. It's kind of like reading uh, George Orwell's 1984 or reading Kill a Mockingbird. You know, there's just a half a dozen books or so in the, you know, that all of us realize are are paramount to our education and, and Where the Red Fern Grows is one of those half a dozen books that most people realize and recognize when, when it's brought up. Though Wilson Rawls died in 1984, his life and work is immortalized through the story of Where the Red Fern Grows and throughout the Cherokee Nation. The year before he passed away, Rawls spoke to a group of students about the impact the film had on him. While I was working with the movie, I got to see something that very few men on this earth will ever see. I saw my boyhood life all come back to life right before my eyes.